going to start playing with this a little bit. Um, this is a sketch that I did and I'm going to, um, let's see if I can get this on here right. I'm going to use this for Tippy's, Tippy and I are doing a swap and, um, oops, this camera, I cannot wait until the situation changes. <laughs> um, we're doing a swap for October and Tippy had wanted to keep it you know, um, put the colors and the season. So, not that she's really a witch, but she's going to be colorful. And I really don't know what she's going to turn out to be, but I like the way she looks in those eyes. She's not really trusting anything that's going on. So, I'm going to start with watercolor and, um, and then move into the acrylic. Okay, so I'm going to start with my Neo colors here. And you see I've taken, I'm going to be using deco art, so I've taken out some of the color. This is apple green, I like that. And I'm going to use um, uh, pumpkin, pumpkin patch. Cool, huh? And then some of this purple. And it's actually eggplant. So, see how that goes. That's, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, things can always change. You never know, right, what we're going to do. And I'm going to, just like I said, start with putting some watercolors down. I'm going to put some, start with some flesh tone. And I am using mixed media, uh, no, this is watercolor paper. And it is uh, 9 by 12. And what I did was, this is actually not the original sketch. Uh, the original sketch I of course scanned, you know, I always do that, and um, printed it out. And you know, it's really great when you print it out, the ink doesn't move around like the graphite on the pencil. And most of the time I have to, especially with one like this where I use a lot of graphite, um, I have to spray it with a workable fixative. And, and it's that's great, but sometimes on the watercolor paper and the, actually more on the mixed media paper, it makes it very slippery. Um, I don't know exactly what's in the workable fixative, but it, it, you know, it just gives it a different feeling. It doesn't absorb when you're using watercolor, so I usually wind up putting, I have to put clear gesso on it. So. Um, it's easier for me to just print it out. My printer allows me to print it on pretty thick paper, so that's what I did. So this is not the original. And the original actually was done on a really, just a really thin paper anyway. It was a, it's in a sketchbook, so. And I have her, actually the first way, is at, with no hair. And then I decided, well, I think I'm going to put a hat on her and I'm going to put some hair. So I sketched her with that with on top of the original sketch and then scanned it again. So I have it scanned with, I have her scanned with and without hair. This is... Yeah, that is watercolor paper. This is like, you know, the Canson. It's not really a heavy weight, and that's why I have it taped down because I think it works out better, especially when I'm doing a tutorial. My paper doesn't all, or a workshop, so my paper doesn't jump up all over the place. So you see, I'm just starting with some watercolor. And this is just a flesh tone.
You know, it's funny, we have many ideas about what we want to do, and sometimes they don't work out. All of a sudden you get an idea, you're going to do it a different way. And it just happens, huh? Well, I like using the watercolor first, even if I'm going to use acrylic on top. I think it it gives it a nice glow. And then also what I've been doing is, which is really cool, I've been using the open acrylic medium gloss with my watercolors and with my acrylic. So it kind of, it, it's glossy. It's not really, a, I guess, a glaze, but it is, um, and I'm, I'm, lost the cap for this and that's not going to be really good. I'm going to use some heavy body flesh color. And it is my own fault because the cap fell. I hate these caps. This, what is this, Matisse? It, their caps stink. These paint companies should come really come up with a better way to keep their paint. <laughs> I haven't found any yet that work that well. Okay, so I am going to actually I'm not going to use water. I am just going to use the acrylic medium. And I'm just thinning out. It, it keeps the, the acrylic, the paint from, uh, it's open. It keeps it open longer, meaning it keeps it so you can work with it. It doesn't dry as fast. And um, I like that. So I'm going to just go over this with that. I want to keep it kind of transparent because I want to be able to see my sketch lines. that rests now and dry and um, I'm pretty happy with the way the colors are blending but you know what I think I think I'm going to just put a little um, pink in the skin
give her a little bit of a pinker, pinker tone. So some gold, a little bit of a golden We all have so many colors in our skin, it's, you know, amazing. I haven't decided on hair color yet. A little blue in her skin tone. Adding a little bit more color to the skin and smoothing it all out nicely. And then go in and put a little color in for the eyes and the lips now I'm going to start putting some watercolor the purple in uh, violet whatever color that that is for the um, hair just to get an idea so I can see what color I am going to come back in with for with the acrylic okay this is as far as I've gotten and um, I just added some color watercolor markers to this and um, I'm just going to put some black in here. So, let's just go over it a little bit more. I'm going to do something with the dress. I think I'm, or whatever this is, I'm going to stamp on here. So I'm going to kind of just get the stamps in, right in here. And um, I don't know what I'm doing with the background yet. Uh, I want to keep her pretty colorful and then maybe the background um, kind of in the dark darker tones and um, so let's see I think I will go with some let's get some dark blue maybe let's see I'm using the neo colors the watercolor crayons and just just putting some color down. Don't know if 
it's going to stay that color, what I'm going to do to it, but it kind of gives me an idea. So, and sometimes it's good just, just to do that. Okay, so I'm just adding some lashes and in the graphite pencil and just outlining a little bit. Um, you know, I'm nowhere near done yet, but that kind of um, puts some interest in her face for now. Oh, I'm doing that. I need to get my, there we go. A uniball. to get stamp and stamp this and then uh, figure out what I want to do with the background and oh so I think I think stamps are called for or in some maybe some stencils I think so I'll be right back Okay, so you can see that I did the little um, ghost and um, the little pumpkin. Now I'm just going to do a little bit little, I have these little graves going here. And um, I'm just going to kind of make some of those. I just mixed some gray and and white together. I think I quite I needed quite so many of these, but they're here now. Then I'll just outline them again with the black pit pen. And let's see, I need to go over the ghosts. on the back because I'll be doing some stenciling over this and stamping but I wanted to have a base down. You know, keeping her nice and bright and colorful and then um, doing the background however you know going to continue on the background and then I will be back. Here I just downloaded uh, a skull 
and then just made two uh, using my eye pages and then printed them out and now I'm just going to do a couple of little details some detail to it make it look like a sugar skull and then I'll add them to the page well now you can see I added the little skulls to the picture and uh, they look so cool on there I color them really pretty you know nice and colorful to match her and I like that the stencil the black stencil looks like wrought iron now I gotta figure out what to do with the other side but I'm really liking the stencil that I chose because it just reminds me of like a wrought iron gate and you know you're coming to the gate in a cemetery or something and there's there's this wrought, wrought iron with some skeleton heads on it so just kind of cool so um, now I've just got to figure out what I'm going to do to the other side there and uh, I was going to grunge it up but I don't think I am I think I'm just going to splatter some paint you can see that I added some stenciling I stamped uh, I put a little spider web up there with a little spider in there and um, just did some interesting things to the background you see I used the white on the dark blue so it looks really pretty having that white uh, stamp on there and then also just put some white in the sky just kind of like wisps so it looks like clouds and and it just made her pop even more the color on her it looks really pretty so now I'm thinking of maybe covering her up and doing some splatters here is the end product here is the picture it's done and I did the splatters with the brushes and I'm gonna leave it I, I, I was gonna grunge it up a little bit more but I think it looks really pretty and so I'm just gonna leave her alone and she's ready to go on her way and thank you guys for being here if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until the next time bye bye well guess what I did too so Tibby's gonna have to pick which one she wants well, I thank you again for being here. Hey, leave me a comment if you have any questions. If you want to check out my workshops, please, my links are below. Uh, go check me out on all other social media. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for being here.